Taking the stage is Heather Fleming, CEO, Catapult Design. Good morning. That was kind of weak. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Heather, and I'm the CEO of Catapult Design in Denver. We're a design firm working for clients who are at that intersection of business innovation and social impact. Now, we're in our ninth year of operations with about 55 design projects in 14 countries. The common thread between all of these projects is to develop novel market-oriented solutions that can move the needle on things like electricity access, improved health and sanitation, mobility, food security, and so on. Now, to set your expectations, I'm not up here because I have any answers, per se. Nor do I work in the health sector, just so you know. But I'm here because I'm a believer in the impact of design. Amen. <laughs> I've seen it. I can say I figured out how to measure it. But I'm also up here because this is not what I believe. Um, and just a nod to Cheryl about being humble. Um, I put this up here because I think it's the message that designers tend to per perpetuate when we all get together and start talking about design and get really excited. Uh, so I thought I'd start by telling you my own uh, story of impact, my origin story, why I went to college to study design, what I saw when I was younger. So when I was in high school, my cousin Jeannie, she worked as a civil engineer for the Indian Health Service on the Navajo Nation. And I grew up in Vanderwagen, New Mexico, a community of about 300 people that was literally like a mile or a few feet off the res. And my family's house, <clears throat> we had electricity, we had a septic system, we had a well. But whenever I went to my cousin's house, none of that stuff existed. Whenever I went to my cousin's house, we always had to bring in water with us to do everything we needed to do, like cook food, wash our hands, clean up or bathe. We used kerosene lamps instead of flipping a switch. Um, we had to use an outhouse every time we went to the bathroom. And because this is the norm on the res, I didn't think too much of this as a kid. But when I was a junior in high school, my cousin Jeannie, she took me out in her truck towards Kintlachi, Arizona. And we were driving along the road, and she turned off down one of these um, uh, dirt, dusty, bumpy roads. And we were driving down it for a very long time until we reached this clearing. And she stopped the car and um, she pointed out this water tank and she told me that she had designed it and installed it. And in the truck she had these big maps and she took one out and she rolled it out across the head of the, the trunk or the front of the car, whatever that's called. And on the map there were all of these little red dots and she explained to me that every time she saw a house or found a house out on one of these these um, these dusty roads that she put a new red dot on that map and once she had a big enough group or clustering of those red dots she could justify funding to come out and bill a well for those families so we stopped at a home near one of the well, near the well, and she greeted the family inside, and they had running water in their home because of Jeannie's tank. Now, I knew the hardships that that family must have had before my cousin showed up, conserving and reusing every inch of water you had for bathing and chores, trekking out into the snow in the wintertime if you wanted to go to the bathroom. So to then have modern plumbing infrastructure is a game changer. Jeannie showed me that designers and engineers could have a dramatic positive impact on people's lives. And back then, cause and effect was black and white. You have life without running water, and you have the benefits of life with modern plumbing. And I based my career on that clarity of impact. Unfortunately, I don't really have it anymore. Here's why. This is what I've learned. So at Catapult, we're a 501c3 mission-driven organization. Our purpose is to make design relevant and accessible to organizations and individuals developing market-based solutions to poverty. Now, our money comes from a mix of both earned revenue as well as uh, grant funding for, for projects. Now, we're a consultancy 
So we're enabling organizations that are implementing the actual solutions. And the public wants our impact to be about the end user. Number of lives saved, improved community health, number of kids that are now able to go to school, and so on and so on. And you know, I do too. Those would be incredible stories to tell about the power of design. But what we've realized is that as an agency that's one step removed from that end user, from that impact, we don't really have a lot of control over any of those metrics for three very good reasons. First of which, design consultancies often don't get a say in what it is that we're designing. By the time organizations engage designers, they've identified what they think is the problem or they've already developed a solution that they then want us to fix, even if the solution is inherently flawed. I mentioned many of our clients are social ventures, so they have to demonstrate both a bottom line as well as social impact. And the timeline for achieving those things can take many years. But our work with them is usually at the very beginning. It spans a few months to typically a year at the most. And the only thing that we can measure with certainty in a time frame like that is maybe some initial results from a pilot, maybe early sales numbers, but certainly not long-term social benefit. And as we know, thirdly, sales does not equal impact. It's a common evaluation metric in design school, but certainly not in global development. Someone may buy this hand washing unit that we've so carefully designed and created, but we can't assume that they're gonna use it in the way that it was intended or that they'll continue to use it and so on and so on. We now know that the impact Catapult has is much less sexy than what our donors and what our potential clients want to hear. We can see and measure whether or not we help a client achieve their immediate goal of getting a product to market. We can also see our ability to build their innovation capacity and a design mindset. Will they inherit a process for innovation after we leave the picture? Now, as a reaction to this frustrating reality, in the past four years, we've developed a way for us to become keepers of impact. So while the majority of our portfolio is still commissioned design work, a small but growing percentage is devoted to projects created and implemented by catapulters. Now with these projects, we control the activities, the outcomes, and the impact goals. And I was gonna share an example. In 2014, we hosted our first design and entrepreneurship event on the Navajo Nation. Now the event for us primarily serves as a vehicle just for building our brand within the region to meet potential clients, to expose entrepreneurs to design tools, and to lay the groundwork for future projects on Navajo. Now we've hosted event there pretty much every year since we've started in 2014, slowly building our network of partners, of contacts and support, our credibility, and also just our understanding of the people there and the challenges. Each year, we learn more and more about the entrepreneurial plight on the Navajo Nation from the people who come to our events. And through them, we've been slowly peeling back the layers, building an understanding of root cause of why things are the way they are on Navajo. For example, if hundreds of people attend these events, why is it that there's only 400 businesses on the Navajo Nation? Why is the Navajo Nation completely stuck in an informal economy where nearly 60% of its residents rely on flea markets and roadside vending in order to make a living? By mapping out the answers to these questions, we begin to visualize the strengths and weaknesses of the entrepreneurial ecosystem on the Navajo Nation. The question then moves to, okay, how do you address some of these weaknesses? Who are the stakeholders involved? What existing processes are in place? And then maybe most importantly, what can we, as little catapult design, effectively do to address these things? Now there are a few glaring holes where we saw a path for making change. One of the primary ones was just in the process and the number of days that it takes to establish a business on the Navajo Nation. The World Bank tracks this data for each country as a metric for entrepreneurial engagement and economic development. And the worst ranking country in their data is Venezuela at 230 days to start a business. Now on the Navajo Nation, 
depending on your business, if you're doing something simple, like a sole proprietorship, it can take 30 days. But if you're doing, I don't know, a corporation and you actually need a storefront, it can take 715 days or two years. Now our theory <clears throat> is that the low number of businesses registered on the Navajo Nation is a direct result of this very complex process and the time commitment required to actually start a business there. So we designed a project to communicate that process to entrepreneurs with the hypothesis that having access to that information might help them make it through the process. Information is always a good thing. And second, to evaluate and track what aspects of the process create the most grief for all stakeholders. Our hypothesis there being that if we could demonstrate and quantify that challenge, we could give that data to lawmakers as concrete steps they can take to streamline the process. So we created Build Navajo. It's a step-by-step decision-making web tool and also a poster campaign in the Navajo Times. Um, we did this after a year of conducting research with the division of the Navajo Department of Economic Development, but also working with successful Navajo entrepreneurs and just entrepreneurs who were at the beginning of that journey of trying to make it through this process. Our goal being um, about transparency and advocacy about that process to start your business, but also to use that data to eventually influence policy reform on the res. Now some of you may be thinking, this is quite a deviation for a group of product designers. And you're probably right, it is. But it's a project with a complex social challenge that was in dire need of a design intervention where we could control the outputs, the metrics, and do what human-centered design does best, give consideration and a voice to the people affected by this issue. In that regard, this project, as big a deviation as it is, to me is indicative of the direction that we want to go as a mission-driven organization that believes in the power of design and societal challenges. At the end of the day, designers and engineers are just problem solvers. In school, we're given a variety of tools and processes for analyzing systems, for identifying and solving problems. And unfortunately, impact is somewhat assumed. For example, not once in my undergraduate career did my professors ever lead a discussion about consequence. How the day-to-day -day decisions that designers make, such as how thick to make the wall of a plastic part, or whether or not to make something one-time use versus reusable, how those decisions affect the environment, yes, but also the people who make a living by manufacturing and managing the consequences that result from all of those decisions. So products and technology are often a double-edged sword. Design and HCD are certainly not the silver bullet to achieving impact, which is why I'm thankful for convenings like this, where designers can learn from evaluators and vice versa, where we can move beyond this narrative that says HCD is an answer instead of what it really is, just a mindset. Thanks, everybody.